Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. It's Wave618 here and we're going to do a new video covering Bitcoin. Uh, I think it's well due since the last video on Bitcoin being a couple of months ago. Um, obviously, a lot of you will be familiar with me calling 24K being the target. Um, a lot of people gave me stick for making such a call saying there's no way Bitcoin could come down so low. Um, but there we have it we've come down to 20k now and the question is will 24k be reclaimed or have we got further downside so these are the kind of things we'll discuss in today's video and um, yeah I do hope that you watch my video that I just posted earlier today covering the stock market yeah because I do feel that what happens in the stock market will carry across into other markets I believe the stock markets are generally representative of general investor sentiment which is what the markets are generally most sensitive to right now considering the fact that we're in a very rocky situation with the global economy so um, yeah um, if you've watched that video you'll see that my bias is certainly bearish at present upon stocks which has led to me having a bearish bias here in crypto also now it is interesting though we are at a very key level which I'll demonstrate so first of all, a little bit of a recap of why 24K was an important level to monitor. So that was largely based on uh, our Camarilla pivots, which have been really useful over the last few years. So here on the weekly time frame. All right, so what we'll do, quick recap over the last, yeah, since 2018, we can take a look. So we obviously had support off of the S4. Subsequent year, you can see 2019, very key resistance at the R4. And then the subsequent year, sorry, subsequent year of 2020, we found support of the S3, broke through the S4, telling us we're in a strong bull market. And then subsequently in 2021, we, we managed to close the year above the R4. Okay, so for me, this was a sign that the subsequent year of 2022, I'd be looking for support off of either the S3 or the S4. So we came down to the S3, and then I was assessing, was the move off the S3 um, impulsive or corrective? Uh, and I wanted to see what would happen as we go into the year open, which was this point here, and we got that rejection. We had a big doji candle on the weekly, we rolled over, and uh, it became quite apparent that we were going to break through the S3 and so the next target would have been the S4. Now as you can see we've shot through it quite dramatically but these levels don't have to act as key support straight away. You know if we can reclaim the S4 this sits at around 24k if we can get back to around this level then you can argue it's still acting as good support. There's no problem with having a wick down beneath. This is over a yearly period when we're on the weekly time frame so ultimately if we close the year above this s4 level then it's still generally a good sign of strength in my opinion for bitcoin okay but as you know i do have my reservations as per my last video on the stock markets i have that kind of concern that we are going to see a bigger uh, crash bigger move to the downside and so as a result i think we may just struggle reclaiming this s4 level this kind of 24k level so we'll have to really wait and see it's a really key level to monitor if we can get back above it Fine. Yes, we can maybe start to start considering some um, a return of the you know the bulls taking control of this market. But for now, I certainly have my reservations on that. Now, regardless, we may get a bit of a bounce off of this point because, as you can see, we've had this shift pitchfork lower warning line hit to the T. And what I will do is I'll have a we can have a little scan over the uh, the top 15 market caps that I've been monitoring within the group. And I'll show you how the downside targets on the pretty much the vast majority of them have all been hit, which in my opinion suggests that we could have a bit of a bounce. So we'll mention that in a moment. But the other reason for 24K being a very significant level is our Bitcoin futures gap. There's a very big, large, obvious gap that got filled at around that point also. So another reason for why it's key support. Um, so yeah, well, I did mention, so let's just run through the top 15. So Ethereum, my downside target was just to hit this lower warning line, which as you can see, we've done hitting this shift pitch. Well, let's take off these camera pivots for a moment. So I mentioned in the, the group the other day, we've got this kind of descending triangle pattern forming. Once this breaks, it's likely to spill over to the lower warning line, which is now done. So that's just uh, obviously a very key um, asset, Ethereum there. 
But let's just run through the rest of them. So I have them in alphabetical order, our top 15 here. So Cardano, Cardano is one exception. So I was thinking we're going to retest this lower warning line. It's not yet come down that far. Uh, next one, uh, we've got Cosmos, which did come down to this lower warning line almost to the T. We hit the target here at around $5.9. Uh, Avalanche, this actually went a bit lower than expected. So we were kind of making this... Um, wedge to the downside and we ultimately ended up breaking down uh, and actually went a bit further down i was expecting it just to come to this point of twenty dollars we ended up coming all the way down to fourteen dollars as you can see binance hit the target almost square on i was looking for a retest of this basically rectangular bit of price action to get tested at the bottom here once more um chronos this has pushed through my target i was looking for the this point here to act as a bit of support uh, at around 14 cents obviously we've pushed through it so that superseded my uh, target there on doge not too far i still think we've got a bit of downside as to 0.045 dollars down here uh polka dot this has hit my target again square on targeting the top of this range here uh 6.55 dollars litecoin just about pushed through my target which was down here at 47 cents oh, sorry 47 dollars uh polygon this has hit the target nicely at around 0 0.359 uh hitting that lower warning line near very near my target of 2.95 as you can see shiba this hit the target square on it was the middle of this range that we were targeting here at 734 Solana, very, very close to the target now. At the bottom of this range was what I was looking for at $24.8. Ripple, really close to my target. All the, we were looking for 27.5 cents. As you can see, it's come down to 29. So everything getting very, very close to the target. Some actually pushing through them slightly. But you can see a lot of these charts are hitting very key levels that I've been anticipating for a good while now. And... Um, so it could pose an argument for a bit of a bounce. But yeah, just coming back to Bitcoin, as I say, we're, we're into the lower warning line here. So we could get a bounce, maybe at least to the uh, lower median line, for example. But ultimately, I do think we do, do keep rolling over. I don't think it's going to mark out a major bottom. Now, one of the key things in determining you know, whether this is a key low or not is obviously looking at stock markets, which as I say is discussed in my last video, but also looking at the macroscopic count. So I do want to take a look at that. So that would be best seen on the BLX chart. So I'm going to pull that up now and we're going to pull it up the weekly time frame. Okay, so here we have it. This is my wave count. Uh, so no doubt this is wave one, two up to here. Okay, the log scale is always a little bit misleading. Take, take, take a look on the linear scale. So wave one no doubt about it one two three four five okay there's really no question about that in my mind then i'm very happy with calling that a wave one macroscopic wave one because of the very nice sub wave count five waves this is your macro wave two macro wave three coming up to your 20k and so this is where it all becomes very debatable where does wave four end okay um so with that said, let's come back to the log scale. So there's various arguments. So you could argue wave, wave four finished here. And then there's an argument wave five finished. If that's the wave four, you could say one, two, three, four, five. That's one potential argument. Yeah, that, that could argue your wave five top is in there. Alternatively, you could call it a wave four triangle, A, B, C, D, E. And then maybe you've got a the fifth wave completion would then be here, I would say, because this pullback would be too large relative to that one to call it a one, two, three, four, five. So I'd say probably there, and this is making it a more complex expanding type uh, flat pattern. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's different ways to, to count this. Um, but regardless, I would have to say, based on how the stock markets are looking, Based on the degree of the sell-off, I would have to argue that the five waves have completed. Uh, of course, the, the bulls here that will, will be clinging on to the prospect of that being wave four, and wave five is yet to finish. Um, 
Let me just remove this other account. Let's remove that one. So the people who are trying to cling on to a bullish scenario will be looking at a one, two, three, four, five as searches. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Now I can't that that this is the bullish count that I would be considering if we do get a considerable bounce, start pushing above 23, or sorry, 24k on Bitcoin. Of course, stocks would also need to show strength, and I'll show you what I'm looking out for on stocks also in order to switch my bias to bullish again. But um, at present, as it stands, I would be thinking that our wave five top finished at this point. Okay, and so with that said, we need to think about how far it can come down and how long it's going to take based off previous wave two corrections. Because if wave five is in, that's a macroscopic wave five. So we're talking about a wave five from the genesis. Then we're then looking at a subsequent uh, uh, wave, major wave two. So we would have had a major wave one all the way from the genesis to the top at 69k. Then we're going to have a wave two. So you've got to compare it to wave twos of a lesser degree. So we can look at this one. We can look at this wave two. So that's what we'll take a look at in just a moment. All right. But yeah, essentially. I would have to at this moment say that wave five is in bringing this here um, and I'll, I'll show you the invalidation point for that as I say I want to see Bitcoin reclaim 24k and Nasdaq is the what are we looking out for on stock so let me just show you on there so Nasdaq I mentioned in the video earlier today so do check that out if you want a more detailed explanation but um, we've got a bit of volatility coming in because the, the Fed has just announced it's hiked interest rates by 0.75 basis points, um, bringing it to a 1.75. And they're talking about it reaching 3% by the end of the year. So obviously that's brought in a bit of volatility today. Um, the UK obviously announcing its interest rates tomorrow and the Euro, Euro announced theirs last week as they hiked rates also. Obviously all trying to control inflation. Um, but um, yeah, the Nasdaq, I'd want to see it get out above this lower, so upper warning line. OK, so for me to switch my bias again to su suggest that we're seeing a bit of bullish momentum coming back into the markets, Nasdaq needs to come above this upper warning line. I don't care about it pushing through the median line. I don't care about it reaching the upper median line. It needs to take out this upper warning line in order for me to switch my bias once more. So that's basically what I'd be looking out for on stocks. Uh, just taking a look at Bitcoin again. So, uh, sorry, the BLX chart is what we'll come back to. That's the key one at present. So, yeah, if we just compare the last previous wave twos. So, let's just bring this like this. Let's go on the linear scale. So, we've got, first of all, we've got this one here. One, two. So that was a huge retracement. I just want to show you when Bitcoin retraces, it retraces properly. So this is beyond the 0.886 Fib. You're approaching definitely a 90% retracement right there. So that's our first one. Okay, 90%. Okay, next one is one, two, three, four, five, and this is your next uh, major wave two. So how much did that retrace right there? Again, let's put our Fib tool on. Here, you, you're probably getting at least 80%. As you can see, it's not quite, let's bring this up a bit. It's not quite come down to the 0.886. It's probably coming down to around 85%, something like that. Yeah. So you can see this is the kind of retracements you get when you get these parabolic runs up. These, par these charts that run in a parabolic fashion, they always retrace a lot more. They're very volatile assets. So, um, yeah, that's basically what I'm looking out for, kind of a 80 to 90% retracement. Okay, I think that's quite reasonable to look out for. You can also see in terms of how long the retracement lasts, um, they, they're relatively fast. Again, let's zoom in on the first one. So let's take a fib time. We'll go from the genesis to the peak. And this one actually took 50% of the time that it took to go up in order to retrace. Okay, so it took a while to be honest, about 50% of the time. Um, and on the next one, so here 
We again take our fib time tool from the genesis to this peak here and you can see this time the low was here so i'd say that comes to around maybe 30 percent yes 30 percent of the time that it took to make the wave one the wave two took 30 percent of that time okay so you know around a third so in terms of how long this next retracement is going to take so don't forget i mean bitcoin since its genesis now has been around uh, around 12 years so if we're talking about a third of that we could talk about a retracement for lasting four years potentially now I know, i'm not too sure it's going to last that long you'll see in today's video i mentioned uh, when i covered the stock markets that i think the u.s election 2024 could be a pivotal point and I've, that's where I'm, i've got november 24 here as the likely low here on uh bitcoin but I also think it's going to retrace further. As I say, I think it could come down to around between 80 and 90 percent. Now, it's already retraced 70 percent from 69K all the way down to 20K, which it's reached. It's retraced 70 percent. OK, now this point here is 80 percent. So this is at 13.6K and then 90 percent is down here at six and a half K. Yeah. So they're both very realistic targets, in my opinion. Okay, People are saying there's no way Bitcoin can come down this low. It's established itself. It's got too much investment. Well, at the end of the day, you've got to look at what Bitcoin represents. It's meant to be competing with fiat currency. Yeah, When's the last time you bought a loaf of bread with Bitcoin? The answer is never, and that's because it's still not doing what it's meant to do. Okay, okay, it's, it's looking promising. I've got no doubt it will you know, um, potentially take over as a, a means of uh, payment, but it's not there yet. OK, so there's nothing to stop this retracing 90 percent. Absolutely nothing. It still doesn't have its intrinsic value. Um, so I'm still of the opinion it can come down. I would not be surprised Bitcoin comes down to 6.5K. Absolutely not. Um, so but initially, I think 13, this region, 13 and a half K. 80% retracement, that is the level that I think we come to. Then I think we get a bit of a bounce before rolling over again. So basically, this, let's just go on the weekly so I can see this a bit better. So just zooming in, let's bring this. So yeah, that's in the right place, November 2024. So I am looking basically for price to keep coming down into 13.5K. Then I think we get a big bounce before okay this wasn't drawn very well let's just draw that again so basically coming down to 13 and a half k then we get a bounce then we come down to six and a half k this is the way it could play out yeah this would tie in with stocks also collapsing uh as i mentioned in earlier in today's video okay so could be wrong as i say invalidation point i've mentioned it on nasdaq getting above that upper warning line uh, Bitcoin getting back above uh, 23 and a half K then we, we can start thinking about is this actually following the more bullish scenario which is as I mentioned uh, the one two three four and five going upwards now there is another key bit of support that we have come into and that's best seen if we go on the bitstamp chart once more so let's just take a look at that uh, weekly time frame. So this is your 20 week simple moving average. It's a very key line. Let's take off the other annotation so we can focus in on that. So this is your uh, sorry, 200 week simple moving average. You can see support back here, support, support, support. So, oops, let's remove that. So yeah, we're at this point. So uh, again, a very interesting level. Generally speaking, the 200 week or 200 day simple moving average, whichever it is, uh, that's been holding a support historically will generally be the marker of the macro trend. You know, once that breaks, you then have to shift your bias to accept that you're in a major bear market. Yeah. But as you can see, we're clinging on to this 200 week simple moving average as we speak. So it's an interesting level to monitor and so I would not be uh, jumping in. I wouldn't be jumping in on a on a, uh, a long right now. Of course, it could do. As I mentioned, there's reasons for support here. But I always like to wait for confirmation. And that confirmation would be Bitcoin reclaiming 23.5K. That's the 
the weekly S4 camera the pivot and it also I'd wait for the Nasdaq to get back and break through that upper warning line that I mentioned because until these things happen as far as I'm concerned any move up is likely just to be a dead cat bounce and we come rolling back down which is what I think is most likely at this moment okay but if we push through our invalidation points then fair enough we could be calling this a key low uh, with support off of the 200 week simple moving average but yeah as i say at the moment still got that bearish bias so i think i've mentioned the key things here uh let's just go back on the daily bring back our annotations so yeah i think we might get a bit of a move back up to this 24k or 23.5 where our s4 camera pivot uh weekly time frame uh sits um but I think we might just keep rolling over to the downside, as I say, Bitcoin then targeting that kind of 13 and a half K mark. Then we get a bit of a rally. Now, I do think when we do see any further upside, altcoins are going to do better than Bitcoin. I think the Bitcoin dominance chart will start continuing its downward move. And um, yeah, because the altcoins seem to have really, really been hit hard. So, yeah, that's the way I'd be looking at it as things stand. So. Overall, still can still see this as a strong bear market. There is a small argument for a bullish move off of this low. As you can see, we've hit our lower warning line. We're at the 200 week simple moving average. I would want us to want us to reclaim this 23 and a half K level, which is very important. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much sums up everything that I wanted to mention in this video. So let's see how things go, guys. We'll update you if anything kind of changes my mind on things. Uh, until then, take care.